Thank you all for having me today. I want to talk to you today about how do you make your ideas stick. And there are complications in making our ideas stick with other people. Anybody that has a spouse, anybody that has kids know that even with the people that we love most, we don't always get the messages across that we want to get them. But it becomes even more complicated when we start thinking about, in a business context, the requirements for an idea to stick in that it's going to be understood when people hear it, that it's going to persist over time, and it's going to change something about how they think or how they act. And so if you look for a moment at the complications that we have, if you're the director of sales for your organization, it's rarely the case that the critical customer decision is going to be made the moment that the PowerPoint presentation is done, the moment that the sales call is done. And so in order for your decision, your information to make a decision change that decision, you've got to be in a position to have your message stick with that person a week later, a month later, at the critical time when they think, that's the time I need to schedule my event at Embassy Suites. If you're the general manager of your hotel, the critical customer moment is never going to happen when you're in the room, when you're looking over that person's shoulder. And so in order to make a message stick about the cultural change that you're trying to create at your hotel, that message better persist over time. And there's an even higher standard in that in order for your ideas to make a difference, they have to cross boundaries. There are lots of important ideas that you have and you talk about within the context of your top leadership team, but they have to cross the boundaries to the people at the front line of your hotel that are delivering the service. And there's an even bigger boundary that your ideas have to cross between all of you inside of your hotels and the customers or clients on the outside. Now, especially in a recession environment, I know that that can be a depressing thought, but I'm not here to depress you. And so I want to convince you that it is possible to make your ideas stick, to make your ideas make a difference, to have them persist over time. And let's start with some ideas, some really kind of quirky, interesting ideas that have stuck. Here's one. How many of you have heard this idea? You only use 10% of your brain. Go ahead and raise your hand. Let's take a market share. Wow. That looks like it has a market share north of 95% in this very distinguished audience. And this is a completely bogus, ludicrous idea, right? If this were true, it would certainly take the fear out of brain injury. <laughs> you could lose a whole hemisphere and not disturb your ability to do Sudoku on the plane going home. Here's another idea. I, I just ran across this one recently. This is a room key card, and I understand that you guys deal with a rumor, a false rumor about the information that is encoded on this. It, it, have you guys run into that? Oh, some of you have. So according to this rumor, you encode my credit card information on the back of this key, room key. Why do you do that? I mean, uh, this is important. I, I've also heard variations of the rumor that you encode my Facebook passbook, Facebook password on the back of this, this key card. Right? Now, that's a completely ludicrous idea, but it leads to some changes in behavior on the part of your customers. You get fewer of these things back than you would have normally because people are trying to protect their credit card information. Here's a, the third that I want to present to you of an idea that is stuck, and you want to talk about an idea that changes behavior. This is one that changes behavior. Here it is. How many of you have heard a story about a guy traveling on business, accepts a drink from an attractive stranger, and winds up in a bathtub full of ice? Go ahead and raise your hand on that. It looks like that one has a smaller market share, about 30% in this audience, so I'm going to tell it to the rest of you that haven't heard it. If you were on a college campus, by the way, the market share of this idea would be north of 80%. All right? So here's the story. Man traveling on business walks into a hotel bar one night, accepts a drink from an attractive stranger. The next thing he remembers, he wakes up. He's disoriented. He's groggy. He's in pain. He's in a bathtub full of ice, and his body's shivering. And as his eyes come into focus, it's a little bit blurry, but his eyes come into focus, and there's a note on the front of the bathtub saying, call 911. And there beside the bathtub is his cell phone, and so he reaches over and grabs the cell phone, holds it to his ear, dials 911, and starts describing his situation to the operator, who is weirdly unfazed by this strange turn of events. The operator says, sir, I want you to reach back behind your back and see if there's a tube protruding from your lower back. So the guy reaches back gingerly and confirms that, yes, sure enough, there is a tube protruding from his lower back. The operator says, sir, 
I'm sorry to say this, but there's a gang of organ thieves that has been operating in our city, and one of your kidneys has been harvested. But don't worry, the paramedics are on their way. Now, that is an utterly terrifying story. And it's completely untrue. Nobody has ever woken up in a bathtub full of ice with one of their kidneys missing. But talk about an idea that would change your behavior, right? Think of the last, think of the last memo that you read at work. Think of the last news story that you saw in the media about a political program. Now, those ideas are pretty unlikely to change your behavior six months from now. But I guarantee you that after hearing that story one time, if six months from now a stranger at a bar sends you a drink, you're going to think twice. <laughs> and it's especially ironic that that story is rampant on college campuses these days, because I've heard versions of that story, and talk about something that crosses barriers, I've heard versions of the story in the United States, and from college students in Singapore, and from college students in France. And that's a tragedy, because if there's one time in your life when you should be accepting drinks from attractive strangers, <laughs> it's when you're in college.